my production team asked me, I normally turn in my notes on Friday. And they sent me a text afterwards that said, PG, uh, we haven't got your notes yet. I said, because I have two sermons and I don't know which one the Lord. So if I send you, I'm going to send you both. And if I send both, I have to preach both. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad I didn't send? Amen. Send, not S-I-N, S-E-N-D. So I, I've really, uh, the, Lord, the Lord confirmed it early this morning in my spirit, what he would have me say. And I, I believe it's right in alignment in the flow of what he would have us do this morning. And so I'm gonna, the, the sermon that would be normally for this week in the series, When God Plays Dirty, I'm going to pile it on at the end because it's a good one. It's a good one. But I feel like um, the Holy Spirit would have me for just a few minutes. This is the shorter of the two, by the way. You're welcome. Let's see, I'll give you a reason to praise God now, huh? Um, we, we find this conversation in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. And let me, before we get into it, don't throw it up yet. Before we get into it, let me just preface it. <clears throat> On Friday a week ago, I was very, very late day, very late, late day here. I, got, I rolled into my house about, probably about 8.45, 9 o'clock after a full day of being here. And um, all good things, but just the weight of leading, you know, it just is what it is. And um, I rolled in about 8.45, heading towards 9 o'clock, and M was on the phone with one of our elders, one of our elders in Florida, Reese and Stretch, strong. And um, she was on the phone with Reese, and she said, oh, you know, uh, PG, Pastor, I I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you're here. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me. And um, she's, the, Lord, the Lord spoke to her in the, one of our services, and she said, the Holy Spirit said that, that he is birthing one, one of, one of the... Um, one of the things that the Lord has anointed Em and I to do is we lay hands on people, we, prompting of the Holy Spirit, we lay hands on people that are struggling getting pregnant. And the Lord just anoints us for some reason. We went through our own very horrific miscarriage and just a lot of things that went on. And it's usually birthed out of that pain that God will release in a greater anointing in your life. So he will break you so that he can flow through you. And um, it's, one of the, it's one of the things, the anointings that sits on our life is to pray for people who are struggling to get pregnant, that they could, that they could be. And um, until this moment, we've probably been doing this for 15, 16, 17 years. I don't know, Rick, I mean, good gracious, how long has it been? So it's been longer than that, actually, because Noah was, he's 19, and this was before Noah. And so 20-plus years, we've been functioning in this, in this kind of an anointing. And to our recollection, there's... There's two couples that we haven't prayed for that we're continuing to pray for to see God do that according to his will in their life. And she said, I know that that's, that's an anointing that sits, she says, but that's on you and Emily. But the anointing that is about to sit on this house is the anointing of a healing center. <clears throat> okay? It's going to be anointing of the healing center. And healing manifests in many ways, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. There are some, some of us that need mental and emotional healing. There's a healing anointing here. Some of us need physical healing. There's a healing anointing that God is trying to flow. And she even made the statement to, the, to me. She said, I'm talking about to the place where even with COVID situations, you know, handkerchiefs and things like that are sent. And I've been in church so long that there's a lot of cynicism when I start seeing stuff. Okay, so y'all pray for me because obviously you don't struggle with that stuff. But. Um, but I do believe that there is a manifestation that's going to happen in some way in this way. And so um, I, I, said, I, said, I said, Reese, I received that word. Watch this. Not because she said anything brand new, but she confirmed what the Holy Spirit had already been saying to me. Let me help all of you in this room in this Pentecostal charismatic prophecy world. When Holy Spirit speaks through someone else, it's to confirm what he's already been talking to you about. So if they're saying something that is contrary to what the Holy Spirit is doing, you don't have to have an attitude, you don't, because they just may be wrong. And, that, you know, there's flesh. It's okay. They may be wrong. But you just step back and you go, I don't receive that at all. I don't receive that at all. And now, if you get mad at it, the Lord rebuke you, you know, I mean, you can do that if you want to. 
But there's crazy people, watch this, and we're all in different places, and some people are really learning how to know the shepherd's voice. So I don't get upset when people are wrong, but I don't receive it either. So she confirmed what Holy Spirit had already been saying. I am sweating like I'm under conviction. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tim. And so, and y'all pray for me because my pants, I, I didn't wear a belt today. Hallelujah. <laughs> These jokers used to fit. Hallelujah. <sighs> and so, um, where was I at? I was worried about my pants falling down. And I didn't want crack to attack, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and so, <sighs> It's 11 o'clock, you came. Like at 9, 9 o'clock, I'm much more spiritual. 8.30 or 10, I'll be much more spiritual. 11.30, I don't know what I'm going to say. Okay. And, and so it was confirming inside of me what Holy Spirit had already said, and I knew that he was going to manifest in this way. So it was a late night and all this, but I still, I'm, I'm, last Sunday I preached a message on the process walking in healing, but you've but you got to do your part. And so for on a personal level, I've been doing my part. And so I knew that I had to get my exercise in. It was late, and I was exhausted, but it didn't matter because if, if I'm going to walk in the healing that has been afforded me, then I've got to do my part, okay? I've got to do my part, okay? I've got to do my part. And so I'm doing my part because I want to walk in everything the Lord has for me, okay? And then for us. While I'm walking, I'm, there's, a, there's about three churches in America that I listen to their praise and worship because it just feeds me, and I find myself walking, and I'm walking at pace, and I just walk at pace, and I don't have to worry about production quality. I don't have to worry about craziness. It is just, it's prophetic. It's God's moving, and it drives me. And so I'm, I'm walking with God, and I find myself in the middle of my neighborhood prophesying over my neighborhood. Declaring because I know uh -huh, these people are shacking up with these people. Come on, these are swingers. Come on, come on, these come on, come on. So, Father, I praise you, swing them right into the church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Swing them right up against me in a crisis moment. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. I, demonic kids running around. God, I pray we give them Adderall in Jesus' name, whatever it takes, and then bring them to your, you know. I mean, I do. I pray it all. I pray it all. So, while I'm walking, one of the services I'm listening to. Um, in the middle of the worship exchange, the pastor stands up and he just makes a very slight comment. And he said, he quoted the scripture in Mark chapter 7, and something leaped in me in light of what one of our elders had already said to me that the Holy Spirit was confirming through her. We find this story in the gospel of Mark chapter 7. And in Mark chapter 7, about in verse 24, we find out that Jesus has come into a house. And, and the, the scripture says that Jesus came in the house but could not be hidden. He came into a house, and the word got out that Jesus was in the house, and he was trying to play it low key. But because there was such desire to be with Jesus, that Jesus could not be hidden. And I don't know how you feel about the church you attend. But I don't want to wonder, am I there to worship Jesus or there to worship the preacher? Am I there to worship Jesus or am I there to worship the worship? Am I there to worship Jesus or am I there to worship the kids' ministry with all the bells and whistles? Am I there to worship Jesus or am I there to get the cotton candy? I, when Jesus is in the house, you don't wonder if Jesus is in the room. And I want to be in a place that when Jesus comes into the house, I don't want him to just be hidden. I want him to take center stage, center stage in worship, center stage in the Word, center stage in Judah Kids, center stage in our youth ministry, center stage in every meeting. I want Jesus to be at the center of all of it when he's in the house. And there was this woman. She was a Gentile. The Bible describes her as a Syrophoenician woman. In other words, she was a woman that was not a part of the Jewish promise. So she was not allowed to have access into this moment. But because there was such a crisis in her house, 
Her daughter, as the Bible describes, is, is now demon-possessed. And she is needing deliverance and healing in her daughter's life. The desire for her child to walk in healing and deliverance drove her from her house to the house where Jesus was and said, I don't care if I'm welcomed or not. I don't care if it's appropriate politically or not. I don't care if I'm breaking protocol or not. I have a desire. One thing have I desired, and that one thing I seek, and it's to be at the feet of Jesus. So she gets there. Desire drove her from her house to the house where he was. This is why I say the zeal for the house of the Lord consumes me. I don't get up and come here because I'm the preacher. I get up and come here because I want to encounter God as badly as you. There's some days the flames of hell are scorching my feet as yours, and I know if I could just make it into the house of the Lord, the enemy can't find me in here when I'm in him. She makes her way to Jesus. And she falls at his feet. The scripture, you can look it up. The scripture says, and she kept asking, will you heal my daughter? Will you deliver my daughter? Will you heal my daughter? Will you deliver my daughter? Watch this. I'm, got, I'm, I'm prophesying to some parents in this room whose children may not be in the room. It was her desire that drove her to his house for an affliction that it wasn't even hers. It was what was going on in her family that made her desire to pursue the feet of Jesus, even if it broke political correctness and protocol. Oh, can I say it the way I want to say it? It was a mandate that she was not allowed in the room. But Jesus being in the house was enough for her to break the mandate to pursue. The need in her house created a desire in her to break the mandate of that house to be at the feet of Jesus where he was. Pastor, that sounds like rebellion. No, it sounds like pursuit. Shatababose. Pursuit. She's at his feet. She knows she's in the wrong. She knows she's not worthy. She knows that it's breaking political correctness. But she came anyway. Oh, let me help somebody in this room. And she didn't just ask once. Look at the text. She kept asking, inferring that Jesus was ignoring her, that he had his attention on someone else, that there was a miracle, there was a breakthrough, there was a deliverance that he had already geared up to have in that moment, in that house with someone else, but she did not allow what even God had re re reeled in for that moment to be a deterrent. She kept asking, and she kept asking, and she kept asking, and she kept, have you ever met an obnoxious woman? She kept asking, and she, have you ever had a daughter in your home? She kept asking, and she kept asking, and she kept asking. But Jesus did not pull the mom card because I said so. He said something even more audacious, even more radical. Look at it in verse 27. But Jesus said to her, huh, let the children be filled first. Look at what he says. For it is not fit to take the children's bread and give it to little dogs. 
I mean, if, you, if anybody's going to be offended, he just called a female a dog. Don't make me say it. Some of you are already nervous. I don't say those words. He called this woman a dog. Oh, God. If you focus on what you could be offended by, you'll miss the power of this text. He said, oh, God, here we go. You ready? It's not fit to take the children's bread. What is the children's bread? What is, what is the children's bread? You see, we're, we're being sanitary, Terry, okay? What is the children's bread? He was inferring that the deliverance and the healing she was asking for is what his children get to eat. The bread of the master's children is healing and deliverance. Let me say it. Healing is the children's bread. Deliverance is the children's bread. It's not the steak. It's not the main course. It's not the salad or the vegetables or the dessert. See, in church today, because we don't understand that healing is the appetizer, we wait on the appetizer for the dessert. We think that the end of God is the healing of God when God is saying, no, 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 that's just where I start. If you're going to taste of me and see that I'm good, deliverance and healing is the bread. Now, there's a couple restaurants in this season that I cannot go to. I can't go to Olive Garden because I go for the bread. Y'all don't understand. See, I go for the bread and then a boat of Alfredo sauce for myself. I go for the bread. It, the chicken fettuccine Alfredo is fine, but I go for the bread. That salad, as long as they baptize it in a Italian dressing, is tolerable. Get rid of the onions, get rid of the tomatoes, get rid of the olives, and I, just let me drink it. Hallelujah, okay? It, but the reason I go to Olive Garden, and in this season I don't go to Olive Garden, is because the only time I go for the Olive Garden is when I go for the bread. Some of y'all going to go to Olive Garden today. Bunch of... Texas Roadhouse. Aren't you glad you're here at 1223? Texas Roadhouse. The yeast is yes and amen. I go for the bread. Back in my day, we had this restaurant called Quincy's. You go for, you don't go for the hard, nasty steak that's been sitting there for four hours, the glaze over the mashed potatoes. No, you go for the bread with the honey butter. If it doesn't come across your face, it ain't anointed enough. You go for the bread. There's this, there's this, there's this, full of the devil place right now in this season called Jim and Nick's right up the road. Jim and Nick's. They have these cornbread. They, they make it small just so you keep popping. 
Okay? They heat up this yellow cornbread, sweet cornbread. It, for all my country folk, it's not regular cornbread, it's sweet cornbread. And if you don't know the difference, you're not from here. Let me help you. you. You're not from here if you don't know the difference. They take the sweet cornbread, the jiffy, the blue box, y'all. Oh, God have mercy. They take, oh, Jesus. They take the blue box, the sweet cornbread, and then they melt cheese all in it. And then they baptize it in butter. And then they bring it to you piping hot. Listen, I, I, I like their chicken tenders, I like their french fries, I like their sweet tea, and my wife loves their beef brisket. But the reason I go is I go for, but watch this, you don't pay for the bread. They know if you'll come for the bread, there's a higher probability you'll pay for something else. So they, oh, so they provide for you the bread as an enticement that while you're eating the goodness of the bread, you will be willing to pay a sacrificial price for the next thing that's coming your way. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He gave healing and deliverance as the appetizer for free so that you'll be willing to pay the price for something else. You don't have to pay a price for the bread. Healing is the bread. Deliverance. I hear you. I hear you. I don't know if that's in Scripture. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him by his stripes. I am eating bread. Somebody give it praise in the place this morning. The bread is free. Healing. Watch this. It's free to you, but it still costs the owner something. What you joyfully consume for free is only because the owner provided it for you. The owner paid the price so that it could be free for you. This is why we should never undervalue the sacrifice of his stripes by not partaking of the bread he lays before us. It's the children's bread. Now let's deal with the offense. You ready? He says, Healing is the children's bread, and it's not right for me to give it to little dogs. Now, if this woman, if her offense had have outweighed her desire, she would have walked out in that conversation. But she didn't quit. She kept asking, and I love this lady, can't wait to meet her in heaven. She says, oh, am I a dog? Sweet. Hey, master. No, no. Mm, let me say, Lord. See, she didn't call him God. She didn't call him a healer. She called him one in which I am submitted to, Lord. I know I don't deserve to be here, but I'm submitted to you. I know I'm not worthy, but I'm submitted to you. I know that you may say no, but I'm submitted to you. Lord, here we go, you ready? Even the dogs get crumbs from the children's bread that falls off the table. She said, I got you, but you got messy kids. Uh huh. You got messy children. And the dogs sit under the table waiting on your messy kids to waste what has been freely given to them. Now, before you make yourself so holy that you never have issues, 
Part of the reason why he allows his children to be messy is so that people who feel like they're not worthy to still be able to find some crumbs. The reason why he'll leave some of our stuff in our lap to deal with is because he knows that we'll stray the bread, we'll mess the bread, we'll create a mess, and it'll drop into a place where somebody who really needs it can find what you decided you didn't want to pick up. So she says, even the dogs can find some crumbs. Under the table. The good thing about it being the children's bread is children make messes. And as long as I'm in the right position, see, she wasn't at his face. You don't understand what I'm saying. She wasn't at his hands. She wasn't in the kitchen where the bread was being baked. She was lowered in position because she knew all she needed was a crumb. Oh. But why would you want the crumb? I'm so glad you asked. Because everything in the bread is in the crumb. If yeast is in the bread, yeast is in the crumb. If yeast is in the flour, yeast is in the crumb. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. If healing is in the bread, healing is in the crumb. If deliverance is in the bread, Deliver us is in there. Everything in the bread has to also be in the crumb. And she said, what I'm dealing with, God, is so easy for you that all I need is just to scoop up the leftover because everything that was in the main course is also in the leftover. And, and, and then God, God says, hmm. Cool. Go back home. Do you see it? Go. Go back home. Your desire drove you to my feet. Now my command is to tell you to get home because deliverance is going to beat you there. The Bible says that she found her daughter sitting up in her right mind, delivered on the edge of her bed. Her deliverance beat her home that day. She came by desire to the house where Jesus could not be hidden. But by the time she got home, deliverance had already beat her there. Healing had already beat her there. She thought she had to get a crumb, but the crumb had already been express mailed back into her house. What are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying that before somebody gets home today, deliverance and healing is going to beat you to your car. If you believe that, why don't you get on your feet and give him praise for the bread that is your portion. As my elders and prayer team are coming, come on. SMC, you're now going to do work. I want you to make me, we're going to do a good old-fashioned fire tunnel. Okay, old school would have called it a Holy Ghost prayer line. Y'all Okay. Because I came to give somebody bread this morning. I, I believe somebody came for the bread. I believe there is a desire in somebody's heart today. And this altar was slammed full. By the end of the altar, every teenager in the room was going through the prayer line, experiencing the bread of heaven falling into their life. And I believe... There's some people in this service that came for the bread. Came for the bread. Hear me. Healing. Every child of God, lift up a praise. Then healing is your portion. 
this is your portion. It's nothing more than bread for you today. It's your bread. It's your bread. Friday, the elder said it, Friday night, the Lord is confirming it. While I was listening to a church in the, in, in the United States, Tuesday night, testimony, can't make this stuff up, y'all. Tuesday night, I've been in my pace with God every single day. Tuesday night, while I am at my daughter's volleyball game, I get a phone call. You ready? I get a phone call from the owner of the breadsmith in Fort Mill. Okay. The owner of the breadsmith. No preservatives. If you don't eat it within the week, a week and a half, it doesn't last. It's pres you can ride by their place and smell the bread. Okay. I got to be careful here. Amen. The owner of the breadsmith in Fort Mill called me and said, Pastor Glenn, it's such an honor to get to meet you. Thank you so much for allowing me to have your cell phone. I, I just want you to know we love the mission, we love the vision, and the level of outreach that you are providing with Judah. And I have heard about you long before Chisholm ever started to work here over the summer. Pastor Glenn, I just want you to know that as the owner of the company, anytime you want bread, come and get it for free. Okay, you didn't get it the way it landed in my spirit. Anytime you decide that you want the bread, the owner says, come get it, it's yours. Watch this. She said, I'm not talking about the bread that's for sale. I'm talking about the bread you can't buy. See, you can't work this up. You can't fake this up. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can't light this up. You can't smoke machine this up. You can't 55 minutes this up. But when the owner of the bread company is saying, if you'll come after it, it is available to you. You can't buy it, but I freely give it. Because I'm going to give you the bread that ain't for free. I mean, that ain't for sale. You can't give your way to your healing. And watch this. There's no price you can pay for the healing and deliverance that he's trying to freely give. When he was wounded, it became bread to his children. And today... I'm wondering if you came for the bread. Okay, okay. Every Tuesday night, I go get our bread. On Wednesday, we put it out there to sell for missions. But every Wednesday night, I now, every Tuesday night, I now go and get our bread. When I go to the, I have to, uh, I have to go, I have, oh, Jesus. I have so many revelations. I have access to a door that the regular customers never have. They know by me knocking, it's me. Because of favor. I didn't do it. The owner of the company decided to give me favor. And then give me a door that everybody else doesn't get to knock on. When I got the bread this past Tuesday, it was a bag full of bread. 
that I had to hike over my shoulder to carry. And I thought that was enough. And they said, oh, no, sir, there's two more bags you need to pick up. I picked up two more bags. And I brought them. And I put them in my truck. And all of a sudden, my truck started to smell like bread. I said, I can't leave this in here. Somebody's going to break in. It's too precious of a gift for me to just leave overnight in my truck. I'll take it in my house. The bread reserved for his house is now dwelling in my house. Watch this. And the aroma of the bread woke me up the next morning. So I put it back in my truck and I drive it to the church and I put it in the foyer and by, oh God have mercy, after about four hours, I'm in my office and the aroma of the bread has now penetrated my office door. What I'm saying is when it's fresh bread, it smells up everything. It smells like bread in here. It, it smells like fresh bread in here. And I'm just wondering if anybody came for the bread. Kaylee, hold this in your hand. And if you need healing in your body today, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, relationally, if there's any area of your life that is not in alignment with the stripe that he freely gave for your healing. Today, I want you to come get your bread. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put you on this side. We're going to line up in this direction. I don't care if you take that bread and you pinch it and you put it in your pocket. I don't care if you take that bread, you pinch it and you eat it. I don't care what you do with it. Just be obedient to whatever the Lord would tell you. It may be a reminder that you got to keep on your desk or on your dash. I don't know what the Lord would say. But I know one thing. If you believe in God for a healing today, today is the day to come and get your bread. I want you to get out of your aisle and line up all the way around if it's necessary. And look, we're going to pray the prayer of faith. Come on, come on. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Minister, teacher, minister right there.
Good morning, family. So great to have you with us. Having this series been awesome. I've, I've so enjoyed the way the Word has been broken open for us uh, through this series. And I'm so grateful for the things that we've learned. You know, there's all these things that we need to make changes on. And sometimes we just need a reminder. There's all these things we could do different, we could do better if we live by the Word of God. And I'm so grateful for a house that is rooted in the Word and that gives us those reminders on a weekly basis. Amen. And I just can't help but to think the Lord was dealing with you during these sermons. They're powerful. You know, the Lord says um, that the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but His Word, it'll remain. Yeah. And maybe you're just going through life and you need something that's steady, something that you need to grab a hold of and just know that it's not sinking sand, that you're not going anywhere, just something that you know is steadfast. I encourage you today to grab on to scriptures, whatever it was that hit your heart, and just grab a hold of that. And normally I'll lead you into a sinner's prayer, but I, I just want to do it a little bit different today. I want to pray over you, and I just want your heart to open up to Him and just say, Yes, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that whoever is listening behind this screen, God, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you have met them there. God, I believe you have, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that you will take them by the hand, Father, that you will walk every mile with them. Lord, everything that they're worried about, God, Lord, let it dissipate. 
God, Lord, every worry, God, Lord, I pray, Lord, that peace be found, Father. And God, I pray, Lord Jesus, in this moment, God, Lord, let their heart align with you, God. And Lord, let you be Lord over their life, Father. God, I pray for a yielding to take place, God, in this moment. And that's what I ask you, Lord, all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 What an awesome, awesome time this morning. Uh, real quick before we get out of here, I just want to remind you of a couple things. Uh, the first thing being that you have several ways in which you can give this morning. Your giving matters. Your giving is an important part of being a member of the faith, a member of the beloved, part of the believers community. Uh, giving opens up your family and yourself and the people around you to blessings that you just can't get otherwise. So we just want to remind you of those opportunities today. You can text to give. You can uh, go on our app in the giving section on our website, judachurch.org, and go to the giving section there. Or you can send it through the mail even, 12615 Steel Creek Road, Charlotte, North Carolina. Whatever you do, however you do it, make sure that you're doing your giving this week, your tithes and your offerings, so that God can open up the windows of heaven and pour it back on you. Hey Judah, if you've been coming for a while or if you've been watching us online, would like to get connected or learn more about our vision, your next step is Growth Track. Our four week classes happen here Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. during our Kingdom classes. For more information or to sign up, visit us at our Judah Church app. Hi everyone, it's Melissa Kelly and I'm so excited to announce that we are in preparation of our 2021 Christmas production entitled Scrooge with a 21st century twist written and directed by me. We're still in need of dancers, flaggers, singers. If you want to help build the set or simply just help behind stage, we are welcoming everyone. Contact me before or after service or the information down below. Hey family, we wanted to come in and remind you about our annual marriage conference, September the 24th through the 26th. Ever since we started Judah Church, we've been fighting for marriages because we know that marriages are the fabric of all of society and the thing that God is wanting to use to infiltrate the earth today. September the 24th through the 26th, spaces are already filling up. We can't wait to see you. So if you're in need of renovations, big, small, or maybe just some upgrades, this is your opportunity to join us. Go to judachurch.org slash events. We hope to see you there. Hey everyone, my name is Jasmine Boozer and I'm starting a new life group here at Judah called I and O, which stands for In Not Of. That is, in the world, not of it. This is a live young adult podcast where we will meet once a month, every second Tuesday, to discuss world events and topics through a Christian perspective. Listen, this world needs young adults who will understand world events and can offer the true Christ-centered answers. So come on out. We launch October 12th at 7 p.m. Bring your friends, pack the house, and let's discuss God together. To sign up, follow the instructions below. I can't wait to hear from you. And before we leave, like we do every service, every Sunday, I just want to pray Deuteronomy 1 and 11 over you. May the God of your fathers increase you a thousand times more than you are and fulfill every promise that he's given you. We love you. Have a good week.